الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back dear viewers, beloved youth and elders to Isa and Maryam in the Noble Quran Last time we mentioned some of the miracles which Isa performed by the permission of Allah such as giving life to the dead and healing lepers these miracles along with his virgin birth were meant to show the Bani Israel the children of Israel the power of Allah since they excelled in medicine these miracles were solid proof that they could recognize as being truly from Allah however the rabbis at the time rejected Isa ibn Maryam and they refused to believe in his teaching that the law of the Torah had been changed by Allah and his, they refused to accept Isa's call to strive for the afterlife the Talmud states in the chapter named the Jewish High Court the Sanhedrin 43a on the eve of the Passover Yishu was hanged Yishu, according to some biblical scholars, refers to Jesus. Forty days before the execution took place, a herald went forth and cried, He is going forth to be stoned because he has practiced sorcery and enticed Israel to apostasy. Anyone who can say anything in his favor, let him come forward and plead on his behalf. But since nothing was brought forward in his behalf, he was hanged on the eve of Passover this is how it appeared to the eyes of people that Isa ibn Maryam was taken to be crucified but in fact Allah saved Isa ibn Maryam from them Allah says in the Quran وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَ ابن مَرْيَمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكٍ مِّنْهِ مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ إِلَّا اتِّبَاعَ الظَّنِّ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says They said in boast, we killed Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they killed him not, nor did they crucify him. But so it was made to appear to them. And those who differ therein are full of doubts, with no certain knowledge. But only conjecture to follow. For of a surety they killed him not. And Allah says, بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا No, Allah raised him up unto himself and Allah is exalted in power, wise. Allah mentions the events surrounding Jesus' last days on earth and he says they're clouded with uncertainty and the truth is that Jesus was not crucified neither rather he prayed to Allah to be saved and Allah saved him by raising him to the heavens as it says in the Bible Jesus called on Allah to turn the cup away from him and the cup refers to death Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah mentions that Isa alayhi salam asked his disciples which of you would like to enter paradise without accounting Allah then threw Isa's image, image onto this disciple who was taken and killed in Isa's stead. We mentioned last time that the Gospel of Judas, which was part of the Nag Hammadi library, states that Jesus was not killed and it was only an image uh, of Jesus that was crucified, the flesh and Jesus was raised directly to the heavens he did not die on the cross and this gospel uh, it dates to the second century it's one of the oldest gospels known to have existed and the council of Nicaea the church fathers 
they burned this gospel. It was found in Egypt in 1945, and it has been confirmed by carbon dating to be one of the oldest gospels. The, dus the discovery of these gospels reaffirmed the truth that we, we know as Muslims, that is in the Quran, that Jesus was not crucified. Allah had raised Jesus, Isa, to the heavens. I adjure all Christians of the world to study the Quran and to learn the truth. It is the guidance and truth from the Lord of the universe to bring humanity out of darkness into light. I also hope that some Muslim researchers will hear this and examine these Gospels and publish the truth about them far and wide. Another belief that was added on to Christianity is the belief in vicarious atonement. That is, that Jesus, peace be upon him, died on the cross to earn forgiveness for humanity. Who are, and human beings are born with this original sin, the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate from the tree in paradise. This concept is illogical as well as unfair. To say that Adam and Eve sinned, and th then we carry their sin uh, when we're born, and that Jesus must die for our redemption, is like saying someone committed murder, and then a second person is held accountable in court, and a third person is punished for it. This is not logical, nor is it fair. Allah is more just than this. Allah says, no bearer of burdens shall bear the burden of another. Every child is born pure on the fitra, innocent on the true nature of Islam, submission to Allah. All we have to do is seek Allah's forgiveness and to turn to Him sincerely and ask of Him. We do not need to go through a priest or an intermediary. We turn directly to Allah. What the church did of selling indulgences in order to people, for people to buy forgiveness, this commercialization of religion is far, far away from the teachings of Isa ibn Maryam. My beloved brothers and sisters, our journey in the life of Isa ibn Maryam now takes us towards the future, to the time of the emergence of the Dajjal, the Antichrist or Impostor Christ. Some of the signs of the coming of the Dajjal are that there will be a great drought on earth. The water will become scarce. Secondly, time will become close. It will pass so quickly. Thirdly, the treasures of the earth will be brought out, the riches of the earth. Fourth, there will be great increase in evil works and works of the devils, subhanAllah. What we see today on, on many of the television channels are, are type, these types of works. May Allah protect us and our youth. People will disbelieve after believing. They will wake up believers and go to sleep disbelievers. And they will sleep as a believer and wake up as a disbeliever. That is, there will be great amounts of temptation and fitna that will cause people to lose their faith. Subhanallah, if we reflect on these signs, we realize the danger of the times we live in, and we ask Allah to protect us and our faith. The Prophet Muhammad warned us about the Dajjal, and who will call people to worship him. The Dajjal will call people to worship him. He described him as having one eye, and Allah does not have one eye. He stated that the Dajjal will have two mountains with him. One will appear to have gardens and fruit and rivers, and the other mountain as if there is fire and smoke on it. When the one person enters this mountain or this place of, of gardens, it will turn into fire. And if a person goes towards this uh, fire that the Dajjal has, they will find it gardens and comfort. The Dajjal will kill a person and bring him back to life. An important question to ask ourselves, especially for our younger viewers, is how do I protect myself from the fitna, especially the temptations of the Dajjal? The scholars, they say, it is through two things. 
through knowledge and through action. Through knowledge, that is by learning our beliefs, the aqidah, the beliefs of Islam. For example, we know that Allah does not eat, nor does He drink. However, the Dajjal eats and drinks. And by knowing, for example, the Dajjal is one-eyed, and Allah is not one-eyed. And that Allah cannot be seen in this world. And the Dajjal will be seen in this world. Also, the scholars, they state that it is through action. Uh, by seeking refuge in one of the two holy mosques in Mecca and Medina, because the Dajjal is forbidden to enter there. And by reciting the first ten verses of Surah Kahf, especially on Fridays, and also by seeking refuge in Allah through our dua. The scholars say, we live in a time of temptations and distractions that test our faith, fitna. These tests, they can be one of two things. They either affect our desires, the shahawat, or they affect our beliefs and understanding of Islam. These are called shubuhat, the doubtful things. There are so many television channels, websites, that tempt our desires and try to make us look at haram or do haram things. But what we must do is seek refuge in Allah from these things and ask Allah for forgiveness. But what is more dangerous than these temptations, the shahawat, the wanton desires, is the false ideas and doubtful matters that are being spread about Islam. A person who falls victim to this type of fitna may lose his religion altogether. So first and foremost, the scholars say, we must equip ourselves with knowledge. And this requires tarbiyah, proper Islamic upbringing. Sheikh Muhammad Hassan narrates or speaks about often, there are many hadith where the narrator says, Haddathani Abi. That is, my father narrated to me, my father taught me. This type of transfer of knowledge from parent to child, from an early age, is essential and is something we must revive. If we revive the spirit of tarbiyah, the spirit of haddathani abi, my father taught me, the, the way that the predecessors taught their children, our youth can blossom in an environment of knowledge. So after the emergence of the Dajjal, Isa ibn Maryam will descend and call the people to believe in Allah alone and slay the Dajjal. The Prophet ﷺ described the descent of Isa salam. He said that Allah would send Isa ibn Maryam and he will descend on a white minaret in the eastern side of Damascus. He will be wearing a white garment or lightly dyed with saffron and his hands will be on the wings of two angels. When he lowers his head there would be beads of water, perspiration falling from his hair. And he raised it up, the beads would spread like pearls. And they would scatter. Every rejecter of faith who smelled his breath would die. And Isa ibn Maryam's breath would reach as far as his eyes would be able to see. Then Isa ibn Maryam, he will search out for the Dajjal and slay him until he would catch hold of him at the gate of Lud, a place in Palestine, and he will kill him. The descent of Isa ibn Maryam from the heavens is one of the ten major signs of the last hour. He will seek out the Dajjal and slay him, as the Prophet Muhammad wasallam has said. When Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, peace be upon him, sees the Dajjal, the Dajjal, the Antichrist, will melt like salt, melts in water. It looks like we're out of time and Jazakumullahu Khairan for joining us. I hope to see you for our next episode of Isa in Maryam in the Noble Quran. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.